Ah, you like this turntable too, eh? Is that right? Uh huh. Isn't this fantastic? Even my cat loves this. Look at this guy. This is this is a wonderful turntable. This is a real gem. When it was in the uh, console, it was very hard to see. All this dust just kind of uh, obscures it. You know, it's rolled inside the console. It's dark. Wow. Okay, I know what we got here. This is a this is a really nice player. So this is a Gerard. Even though you can see the word Viking up here. Viking, but really it's a Gerard. Gerard or Gerard, however you want to say it. Fantastic. So th this is a really cool record player. It's got this feeler arm. This feeler arm will swing over and detect the size of the record. And then the tone arm will move in accordance to what this arm has discovered. It'll move over depending upon the size of the record. What do we got here? We've got auto, manual, start, reject, and stop. We've got all speeds, 78, 45, 33, and 16. I have seen a 16 RPM record, by the way. Those are used for things like uh, court recordings and things like that. They're not meant for music or high fidelity. This guy adjusts for depending upon the size of the record you're putting in. Let me flip this. So, let's see. Normally a 12-inch record it would be sitting there. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, a great big uh-oh has come. Where's the post? Where is the post? Uh-oh. Ah, that's not good at all. I didn't see it out there anywhere. Oh, no. Well, we won't sweat over it at the moment, but without the special post here, it's going to be difficult to stack records, have them dropped. It won't, it won't drop records, in fact. Still play them. You can still play them with us quite fine. But, wow, that's just too bad. You know, I didn't see it out in the console, rattling around or anything. I'll have to go take another look, though. Yeah, so the way this would normally work is the uh, the post comes up. It usually tips a bit back this way. You put records on it, and the records tip a bit and lay on this gizmo um, as the uh, one record finishes and it goes to play the next one this mechanism right here pushes the lowest record kind of over the edge so to speak and it drops down the spindle onto the player onto the onto the turntable itself so these are really cool when they work this arm comes whipping over it's, it's really a cool mechanism well maybe we'll be lucky and we'll find this somewhere so uh, what to do here should we actually just plug this guy in and see what happens? Is that a bad move? Should probably give it a little bit of an inspection first before we do something like that. Yeah, you agree, Spunky. Okay, let's just take a look underneath. It looks like lubrication is bad in here. I see a spring disconnected over there. I'm afraid we're gonna, I'm gonna have to spend a little bit of time here before we plug it in. Set it down. There we go. I got a spring right here that's disconnected. Where would that go? The biggest problem with doing this kind of uh, repair is you get a uh, record player with a spring that's actually missing. If there's a spring missing, good luck figuring that out. Um, just about every record player you look at looks different underneath. Uh, there's some similarities here and there, but pretty much every time you look at one of these mechanisms, this has been my experience anyway, it's a whole new kettle of fish. Uh, to try to uh, to understand fully and uh, very specifically if a spring is gone wow this is bad enough the spring is there but where is it supposed to connect not a lot of options here it's not broken or anything 
and it can't, it can't go very far. Maybe it's supposed to parallel this spring. Not so likely. If it was, it would be manufactured so it would comfortably parallel it. Uh, oh, that's hard to say. Yeah, there's a cam down here. You can see the lubrication is it's completely dry. So this is the, the last turntable I looked at. Everything moved beautifully, even though I think it was all original. Um, this one, I think this one is glued solid. That's my guess. There's the speed adjustment here. There's the spring. And a fair bit of corrosion on there. You can see the lubrication here. This is the good way to test it. It's dry as a bone. It's lubrication. It's not lubrication anymore. So this guy's going to require a fair bit of effort to bring him back. This uh, wire, this is the uh, shielded wire. This one here, it looks like it's really stiff. It's really stiff. And here, you can tell the insulation is broken because look, it's just swinging like there's a joint in there. Chance of a short circuit in there is really, really good. Really good. Like this wire is stiff enough that, listen to it. Listen, I'll put it up by the microphone here. So I'm pretty sure you heard those clicks. That's me just bending this thing. So. So we'll have to change out the uh, shielded wire. Yeah, wow, if there is a spring missing. So I just started moving the things around and best I can. Don't force anything, just moving stuff, kind of see what what is moving and what isn't kind of stuck. So now that's, that's probably supposed to move very, very freely. But I, I have to push it to make it move. It's really bunged up in the spot there. Yeah, this is supposed to slide. It's got a pretty strong spring pulling on it. And then we can see these, this component in here, it's a cam. There's some grease there. It's just as, there's the grease. Grease, you shouldn't be able to drop grease in here. The here it hit the table. I think this is really stuck. This looks kind of odd too. This this capacitor here. The wires come out of this cover box, but instead of the wires coming out through openings for the wires, the wires are coming out and they just screwed this box down onto them. So I think this is a replacement. And the guy who did it just didn't care enough to kind of close up this box tight here. Okay, now the motor. Let me, I can get at the rotor there. Let me see if I can rotate it. Yeah, oh yeah, it's rotating free. That's good, so the motor is not bad. In terms of lubrication and the freedom of the rotor to, to rotate. Okay, I don't think we want to plug it right here. Garrard record changer. Made in uh, Swindo, Swindow, Swindon, Swindon. I'm not sure what that says. Swindon, England. So many record players over here in Canada of this vintage are British. Uh, it's not too surprising. I mean, Canada is part of the Commonwealth and the special trade relationships between the Commonwealth countries. So, not too surprising. England was able to flood Canada with turntables, but uh, these are real beauties. I mean, looking back on these as a vintage turntable, this is the kind of thing you want. And even 
even this, the uh, this is this is I mean, it's not as light as a super modern turntable, but that's not bad at all. And the cartridge. Oh, I think it might have a magnetic cartridge. It just might have a magnetic cartridge. Whew. Oh, diggity dog. We'll fiddle with this later. I think this is how you uh, change the needle. Because you have to have two needles. If you're going to play 78, you need a 78 needle. Or you should use a 78 needle. I can get by with a regular micro groove needle on a 78 record, but I don't think you should. A little masking tape there to strengthen this guy up and get him through the ages. Didn't help. Let's take off the platter here. It looks like it's got kind of a C-shaped clip, a little bit unusual looking clip here. Just the kind of thing I'll send flying through my shop. If I could get a, gotta get me a getta. There she goes. Yeah, it's just what I was gonna get. <laughs> there it is. Got it. something more going on here. Still locked in there? It's not stuck on the shaft. I don't know. Huh. So there's some trick to it here. instructions. Yeah, I'm not sure how to get that off. Okay, I'm going to have to ponder that, maybe read up on something to figure out how to do that. Okay, so I just read the trick of getting this off is the same trick that a lot of record players require. And you have to be lifting the platter up. 
and then you tap this down and the two will separate and the platter will come right off. Um, the problem here in doing this is you need three hands. You need two lifting and one hitting. And you know, look, I've only got two hands. What am I going to do here? Uh, in some of these turntables, I'll have holes in the platter, even holes in here. And you can fashion a little tool out of some coat hanger wire or something like that. Feed it in. I actually have one, but God, God, who knows where that went. Hook it in, then you can lift and then tap, but there's no option here. Another thing you can do is you can put, uh, you can pry this. Again, you kind of need two hands to affect the prying while you tap it. So what am I going to do? That's the real question. I think I'm going to pry on one edge here, put in, put in a pry, a prier, a prying thing, oh, for crying out for crying out loud. I don't want to put something metal in here for fear of scratching this. You can see I, I've taken the dust off it now. I really haven't cleaned it. I've just taken all the dust off. Wow, it looks a lot better, right? Um, so, uh, prying. You know, I don't have a really good set of prying tools. I have to go hunt something down here. Okay. Oh, for crying out loud. Look at that. Ah, I just broke that off. The, uh, okay, that's what happens, man. Brittle plastic. I just hooked it with this hammer cloth. Just broke right off. Brittle plastic. Darn it. That was unfortunate. Pretty sure I can fix it back, though. Okay, so what I'm going to try to do, I'm going to try to push down on this while pulling up on this side and tapping in the hopes that there's not a lot holding this on. Maybe, maybe it'll, it'll come off easily. Maybe. So let's see how we can do this. <laughs> you can't pull it with one hand. Another, I need another lever. Ah. You know what? Before I monkey around too much. in there. I have gotten these off before uh, by tapping and it is quite dramatic. Just a little tap and off it comes. Can't see that I'm getting any. Where's near that here? That's the more power I put into this, the more likely I am to damage something or hurt myself. Ah. ah! I gotta come up with some creative solution here. That's for sure. Yeah, I've just been thinking about it uh, a bit, and maybe I do have a third hand here. Maybe I can make gravity my third hand.
fits in there. It's coming off. It's not popping off like I would expect, though. like it's come down. I shouldn't turn the camera off. I was here practicing in my head to have my wife come down and be the third hand. <laughs> I, was, I was just practicing and what I was figuring out was how to get the best grip on here. To, and I was envisioning her, her hand coming in and, and whacking it. I was just holding it up like this and popped off. It popped off. <laughs> so I guess the gravity thing helped. Anyway, got it off. Great. Well, it's pretty dusty in here, but uh, looks fine otherwise. I don't see any extensive corrosion or anything like that. There's a spring there. Spins nicely. Very good condition. This is in very good condition. Leave that alone. And there's a brake shoe right there. This is the uh, velocity sensor here. I think this should move more freely here. I think this piece should move relative to this bracket, pretty sure. Yeah, that, it's okay. It's moving. Good. Let's check the speed adjust. So we can see the uh, motor shaft right here. Let's let's just give it a spin by hand here and see if it's. Oh yeah, it's fine. I spun it from underneath and it seemed fine. That's really good. <clears throat> so I don't I don't see too much I can do up here. It all seems pretty good. I see a little bit of black powder here. Probably coming from the outer edge of this. Maybe uh, because it hasn't been run for so long. Or, worse yet, this might have been just running on one spot. This might have been frozen by the still platter. Then you'd have this grinding, grinding on the edge of it, which would not be good at all. 
if you'll put a bump in it. I don't feel anything. That looks very good. Very, very good, in fact. Okay, let's flip it over and we'll, we'll actually... Uh, do a little bit under here. So I see lots of dried up grease and lubricant on here. So I'm going to get a little generous with the uh, WD-40. Now there's other solvents you can use on here. Um, you know, take your choice. Uh, I like WD-40. It leaves a little bit of an oil film, you know. So I'll be a little generous here. If you manage to oil some parts that really should be left dry, uh, with WD-40, it's not that bad a deal because the oil is so light, the remaining oil. Now, there's probably some stuff up in here we can't even see. Easier there, but I think that should really move. Probably, well, it's hard to say. Some of these parts are designed so they will just, you know, gravity would make them fall back and forth, and others are designed with a bit of a grip to them, like maybe this one. So they'll, you can move them, but they'll stick wherever they stop. They have sort of a spring-loaded clutch mechanism to put a bit of grip on it. is just it's not coming back sometimes you add a little oil to grease it kind of comes back but this stuff is so dried out a little bit of WD-40 has softened it up though is supposed to ride right under this little screw feature they certainly put a lot on here under here. I don't see any. But I 
just move every lever. This is the starter here. more of the parts. Oh, we still have this springy hanging here. Whew. What is that for? They wouldn't possibly leave a spare spring hanging there, would they? It's very different from this one. Or is that an alternate spring for that? Is that what that is? I don't see that it can connect anywhere. Is that a spring that fell off and somebody stuck it there because they didn't know what to do with it? I doubt it. The mystery spring. Yeah, I might be able to find out if I can get a good enough manual. Parts moving on this cam here, this thing. And then there's some parts here that come along and contact other things and push them when the time comes. They're pushing it right in here. You usually find some grease along those surfaces, like right in here. Interesting uh, part here. Uh, there's a copper band here. The band can open so the uh, bar can come shooting out of the slot here. Must be a shortcut in there somewhere for it. right way necessarily here. Just mop up some of the excess WD-40 here. Just air coming out. There we go. I'm running low here in my spray bottle. I think there's some in there. WD-40 will also uh, combat corrosion. Um, 
most of this is not corroding, but there are some some parts in here I noticed. I can see corrosion on the top of this. It's not very important except that powder can kind of work its way into the mechanism, sort of. So another thing to look at are these rubber mounts. Uh, anywhere you see rubber mounts like this, um, this is holding the whole motor plate here. These are really in good shape. A couple more back here. Yeah, one here that's compressed quite a bit. But uh, very rubbery. Very rubbery. I wonder why some things, you know, they come in my shop and everything rubber is completely falling apart and other things like this come in and uh, rubber is in good shape. Makes me wonder what, uh, what the difference is. If you weren't going to use WD-40, then I'd use that motor oil, uh, three-in-one motor oil, synthetic oil. That sounds a little scratchy, doesn't it? sound very good at all. Throw, throw a little grease on there. And talking about grease, I have to go out. It's out in my garage. I have to go out and get it. Okay, so these are for all the slipping and sliding surfaces, especially this one here. Yeah, that's, that's not going to stop making that scrapey sound, I'm afraid. Okay. the grease under some of these pieces, the best you can do is just kind of get it started on the edges. So here there's a bit of corrosion on here, so this is has the potential to uh, really lock up if the corrosion products and the grease don't get along well. don't need much grease. need much grease or oil. You can see chips of the corrosion. So 20, 20 years from now this will probably have to be redone. I don't know if I'll still be running my shop at that time. <laughs> 20 years, I hope to. This piece really feels like it has a uh, some kind of friction brake system on it. So this could be related to the uh, record feeling arm. I'll just leave it as it is now. I mean, it's not going to loosen up, I'm sure of that. 
just assume it is the way it's supposed to be. Yeah, if you think someone like me, and I've fixed many, many, many of these record players, or just done maintenance on them, not really repairing them. Uh, if you think I can look at this mechanism and understand it, no. I mean, I have some notions of, you know, uh, how some of this works. You know, it's easy to see here's a cam and it pushes all these levers, but to, 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 to be very, very detailed in the operation of this turntable, no. Not happening. Somewhere in here is a, a velocity sensor or some technique for detecting the end of the record. You know, I can kind of recognize that. I, I, I expect it's in here somewhere. But right now I couldn't tell you where. Uh, what do you think? It's moving pretty freely. turntable has no mechanism under it. I, my turntable is fully uh, manual. Turntable. And the problem with that is when the record comes to an end, if you're not in the room, uh, there's a good chance you're going to forget about it. And I've, I've definitely let my record player play overnight. Just the... Uh, I'm going to leave that. Just, just going around the center part of the record all night long. So some uh, record players they have just an automatic feature where they'll lift up at the end of the record. That's that's pretty valuable stuff. Oh, what's this? This guy doesn't look too good. So I don't know what to do about that loose spring. see this this cord is giving out now this is on a uh, shelf that rolls out on rollers to, to play records you roll it out and so this wire is flexed over and over and over and it, it's just got no no chance of survival in my view go at this point. What do you think? Sure, let's give it a go. are a little greasy here. So on this one you can see the brake is sticking out here. A little brake. And the idler wheel, that's already pulled back in. Good, that's it. No, the brake is stuck here again. Come on, everybody out. There we go. Okay. One of my favorite words. Okay. Now, of course, we don't have the spindle, so it's a bit of a, bit of a question mark as to whether this is really going to work as if the spindle was there. Now, the spindle has no mechanical function. It's, it's a solid piece. It comes up and bends this way. So I don't think the record player has any awareness or any mechanics working through it like a lot of record players do. It's a very, very simple spindle. And I've already uh, tracked down where I can get one. Pretty sure I can get one. So I guess, uh, OK. 
Okay. Very good. Plugged in. Ready to go. This is on auto. Let's just advance it by hand here until it... Okay, so I'm pretty sure it's in the stop position. That sound you hear, the ringing, is the brake shoe rubbing on the inside of the rim. Doesn't seem to be... Br not much of a brake, is it? Okay, so... What happened there? I didn't do a thing. I was just about to change the speed. Now, I've done another record player very similar to this, and the same sort of thing would happen. It would just launch the tone arm. That's probably because it's between functions here. There we go. So something, some spring was loaded up in there. There we go. Sound like that brake was rubbing the entire time there. So we got to start, stop, manual. No record, and uh, there is a needle under there. There is, so we want to be a little bit careful that this doesn't set down right on here. Okay, we're just going to give it uh, a restricted power to start with, just in case. Fire, okay, 78, let's put it down on. 33, so it's a little slower. Here we go. Come on. You can do it. There it was the record sensor. Just going to let it power its way through here. Remember, we're on restricted power, so. Not much of a restriction, though. Let's see, we're running at 123 volts, so there's really no restriction here. Okay, so it determined, I guess, there was no record. When this arm came over, it didn't feel a record. So it assumed all the records had dropped and we're done. So the function was good. Speed was bad. Let's put it on 45 and see if it see if it will go a little quicker here. You gotta hold it long enough. There we go. That's a little faster. Feels to me like the motor is really laboring. Yeah, let's let it go again. I'm the record. pusher that pushed it all the way over is still there. Of course the tone arm is not supposed to go this way, it's supposed to go in towards the middle as it plays the record. There we go. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of mechanism here to move at this point. Right there is having some trouble. we got to diagnose what that trouble really is. It could be everything from a weak motor or uh, the drive, various drives, something is slipping, most importantly the uh, intermediate wheel. And uh, So let's try it again. This time we're going to listen very carefully to what sounds it's making just at the time where it's beginning to get stuck. i got to be the record again. bad there. This might get looser every time we, we cycle it. Okay, I hear a ringing. That's the idler uh, slipping against the uh, rim. Very quiet. There you can hear it. So that's what I'd say that is. I'd say the uh, intermediate wheel is slipping. Not too bad. Okay, I'll take this off. I'll cut the power off here. So 
this is the intermediate wheel. It's either slipping on the, uh, you can call it a cap stand, or this piece on the motor, or it's slipping on the actual rim. So we'll pop this off and take a closer look at it. it feels pretty good. Maybe it's not. Or maybe it's pretty good, but just not good enough. Again, there's these washers that you can lose so easily. And one often stuck on the bottom here. Nope, it stayed there. So it's pretty easy to pick this up. The little washer, it's very thin, stays stuck on the bottom. You don't even see it. And then a moment later, it's it's gone in your shop. And you don't even know you've lost it. And there's two, two washers on the top. So sometimes these washers are used to, to finely adjust the height of this up and down. I put more washers under it or above it. And these are two, two different materials, these two. Just make sure you put it back together the same way it came apart. Okay, you know what? I'm going to look at this under the microscope. I think that might be interesting to take a really close look at, at, at this. See if we can see any of the signs of wear. Okay, well it took quite a long time to get such a large item set up under the microscope here. But, uh, you can kind of see the wheel coming up right in there. And then we're going to take a good close look at the surface here. Not so sure we're going to determine anything. So there it is. That's pretty shiny. That's one thing I would notice. Uh, the light is shining off it easily. Let me just adjust the light there. Get the light to just just come over the surface. So now what's it supposed to look like? I think it should look a little blacker. I don't think it should be so reflective. I think the reflective surface indicates some polishing has happened uh, on this rubber. So I'm going to grind this guy down a little bit, and we'll put it back under here and take a look at it. I'm afraid I can't really rotate it. I'll give it a try here, but I don't think I can really rotate it, but I doubt it's going to look any different anywhere else. That's some cracks on the edges there. So we are looking at a relatively good one here. And I haven't looked at many under the microscope, so really look at one that's really deteriorated. The, the last one I did, just a couple of days ago, the wheel, um, intermediate wheel, was, was clearly um, oxidized or something had happened on the surface. Uh, you could feel it was extra hard, the rubber behind it, like you can stick your nail into these things and kind of, kind of judge the hardness. Bit, and then you can compare it to the rubber in behind here. Again, sticking your nail, looking at how, how easily it flexes. This one is really flexible. So I think we just grind this polished surface, even looking at it like this, you know, just looking at it like that. You can see the, the light, a light reflection. For me, it's right. For you, it's right there. For me, it's right here. Now let's grind this up a little bit. We'll see if that makes a good difference in the traction. It can't hurt as long as you do it, do it right.